What up YouTube, Salvador Brigman here, and today we are talking about nonprofit crowdfunding, and specifically how you can raise money for your nonprofit organization using crowdfunding. So if this is your first time listening, I run a podcast called Crowdfunding Demystified. On episode 152, I had on the CEO of Razu, one of the top crowdfunding platforms out there for nonprofits. This, this platform alone has raised over $500 million for nonprofit organizations. They're doing a stellar job. There are many nonprofit crowdfunding platforms out there that you can choose from. I'll include a link in the description of this YouTube channel if you wanna check out some more, um, some of the other platforms that are out there. I've also written the book, Nonprofit Crowdfunding Explained, where I really go in depth into a launch strategy. If you are trying to raise money for your nonprofit organization, you don't even know where to get started. <laughs> you don't know where, where to get started with social media media or really developing a marketing plan, getting donors in the door, all that kind of stuff. I wrote this book in 2016. I'm very proud of it. It also has an ebook and a paperback version, so you can check that out. And I do have an exciting announcement in the middle of this YouTube video, so stay tuned for that. But specifically in this video, I want to break down two different models of fundraising. Now, the first model is a traditional crowdfunding campaign, the way that many people think of it. You can think of it as Kickstarter, you can think of it as GoFundMe, etc. Um, this is sort of the traditional model of crowdfunding. So we're gonna be talking about that first. Then I'm gonna go into peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And this is sort of a newer model and something that more and more nonprofits are getting engaged with and more people are using to raise money. Both of them extremely successful models. But there are very differences here in terms of your obligations as a nonprofit and also the obligations of your core donor base. So first of all, a traditional crowdfunding campaign. You as a nonprofit can launch a crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter for a project. Unfortunately, you can't raise money for a cause on Kickstarter. You can't just raise money for the sake of it. You need to have a specific project that you're raising money for if you wanna put it on Kickstarter. There are other nonprofit crowdfunding platforms out there where you can just raise money for a cause. You can just raise money for a charity, etc. But what all of these different campaigns have in common, and this is sort of the, the basis of a crowdfunding campaign is, you have a fundraising goal. This is the target amount that you wanna hit uh, if you're doing the campaign, could be $10,000, could be $20,000, et cetera. You have a target goal you're trying to reach. And that sort of creates a sense of a momentum as people are pledging money, as donations are pouring in, you can see your fundraising meter start to go up as you're nearing that goal. It sort of creates this sense of momentum and people wanna be a part of that. Uh, specifically, if they, call, they care about the cause and what you're doing also, you know, they see that you're making progress. The next core component of a crowdfunding campaign is there is a specific fundraising duration. This could be 30 days, this could be 45 days, could even be 20 days. But there's a specific amount of time where you are accepting donations for this crowdfunding campaign. And you might think like, why would I wanna do that? Like, wouldn't I want just donations around the clock all year? Like, obviously I would want that. Honestly, if you have studied human psychology at all, or if you're a marketer out there in the audience, you know that you do not want that type of model. And here's the reason. The only reason that you and I get around to anything in our life is because we feel an emotion about something, because we feel a sense of urgency. There's a sense of urgency with, oh no, I have to complete this or I won't make the deadline, or oh no, I have to do this or this is going to happen. This, this sense of urgency is what tends to prompt action among an ordinary person. So for a crowdfunding campaign, when you have a specific duration that you're raising money for, it creates a sense of urgency in your donors. They can either donate to your campaign now or they don't get a chance to. They don't get a chance to impact your fundraising initiative. They don't get a chance to be a part of what you're doing. So when you have this duration, in their mind, it bumps your, I guess, if they have a list, 10 things that are on their mind, it bumps your campaign up to number three, maybe even number two. If you're really good at marketing, maybe number one on their list. 
They have a lot of things they can worry about. They have work, they have social events, they have different things they're doing in their life. Your campaign is likely number 10 on that list for the, for the person. For you, it might be number one because you care a lot about what you're doing and it's your organization. For them, you know, they don't care as much. But with a duration, a fundraising duration, creates that urgency, sends it up to number one, it prompts action. The last part of a traditional crowdfunding campaign is some campaigns will offer rewards or perks. If you donate to the campaign, you'll gain access to something. Maybe it's invitation to an event. Maybe it's you're included on a wall of supporters or, or some way to thank you for having given money to this campaign. Those are what I would say would be the three core components of a traditional crowdfunding campaign. And obviously there's the pitch video, there's the, the copywriting or the words explaining what it is you're doing, there's uh, images that share your story, etc. Honestly, if you want more info on, like, on that, go and listen to episode 152 of my podcast, the Crowdfunding Demystified podcast, because the guest really shares a lot of great information about that. Now, the second type of model differs from the first type of model in a very core way. And that comes down to who is actually doing the legwork. So with a traditional crowdfunding campaign, the actual nonprofit is marketing the campaign, they're getting donors in the door, they're driving traffic, they're doing communication, they're really hand-holding the donors, making sure they understand what it is they're doing, why this cause matters, why it should even be on their radar, etc. You as the nonprofit are doing a lot of the legwork here to raise that amount, whatever it is that you're seeking. With a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, you actually have a different role. You have far more of a educational role and more of a leadership role. So what do I mean by that? I mean, with a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, a bunch of people, we can call them advocates or evangelists or your core donors, are actually going out there to their social network and they're convincing people, hey, I just joined this whole new thing, it's called Relay for Life, I'm gonna be running say three miles, or gonna be walking this amount. Would you like to support me in this endeavor for this event? The money is going to say cancer research. If you support me, I would love it. I'm really gonna go, be going out there doing a lot of cardio, you know, getting my, my blood pumping, et cetera. And it would just mean a lot to me as a friend. So that person is working their network and they're raising money on your behalf on your behalf as a nonprofit organization. So where do you stand, I guess, in this process? It's your job then to educate all of these evangelists, to really not only give them the tools that they need in terms of social media post templates, fundraising letters, uh, emails that they can use to solicit donations, how they should begin a conversation with their friends. You're holding meetings likely to educate them about this. You're also taking on the burden of the, the emotional component of the campaign, you know, inspiring them, getting them motivated, getting them actually wanting to go out there and say to their friend, which is kind of scary, hey, would you mind supporting me in this race? You're, you're basically holding their hand through this entire process. And it's not something to be, to be taken lightly here. Um, and then those people are going out there and they're working their network. You're basically doing all the background admin tasks. You're scheduling the event if it's something like that. You're, you're doing all of that for the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising effort. And maybe even you're, you're highlighting some of the people who have donated a lot of money or you're, you're helping them form those various connections. And that's the main difference between a traditional crowdfunding campaign for a nonprofit and a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign for a nonprofit. I know that is a lot of information. And I also know that if right now, if you have never done anything like this, you're probably like, oh my gosh, like where do I even begin? You know, how do I even get started here? This sounds like a headache. This sounds like a lot of complicated procedures and strategies, etc. I'm very proud to announce that I have recently released the new audio version for Nonprofit Crowdfunding Explained. So if you are looking for a proven blueprint, 
If you are looking for a complete done for you strategy to raise money, this is the audiobook for you. And a lot of my audience honestly loves my podcast. They love what I do when I bring on guests, when I talk with them, when when I they they can hear the the passion in my voice when I'm talking about these various topics. You don't get that as much with my physical copy of my book or with my ebook. And that's really why I decided to put out this audio version that sort of accompanies these two other versions. It's because I know you yourself running a nonprofit are very busy. Like we all have lots of things we're doing in our lives. We have to maybe go to the gym, we have to commute to work, we have to be in our car for an ungodly amount of time each day, we have to clean the house, we have to do laundry, etc. Wouldn't it be great if you could be learning something at the same time? And the problem with a physical book or an ebook is your attention is just tied to that. You can't really be doing anything else simultaneously. With an audiobook, you can be listening while you're doing the dishes. You can be listening while you're in the car commuting to work. You can be listening while you're at the gym pumping iron or doing cardio or whatever it is. You, know, you can even be listening while you're walking down the street or you're commuting via subway or anything like that. You can be turn your life into a learning center here and rather than making it sure to actually run one of these campaigns, you can do it far more simply and you can have a much more sense of confidence going into your campaign knowing that you have strategies that work for a traditional crowdfunding campaign or for a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. So I urge you to grab a copy of that audiobook. Um, I'll include a link in the description. I'll also include a link in the video as an annotation so that you can check it out there. But I think this is a really a good beginning point. Um, specifically, I think just so many nonprofits out there, like it's very sad to me that nonprofits quite simply are not up to date on the, the best techniques, strategies, technology out there. They really, really struggle. Like many nonprofits are still using physical mail. <laughs> they're, still, they're still using techniques that worked like maybe 40 years ago. Guys, the game has changed. Like sending out physical mail is not going to engage millennials. It's not going to engage people whose attention is tied to things like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and it just it's it's not even relevant to them. It's not even on their radar. And that's why I decided to put together these various strategies for you. I'm going to be putting out also more videos like this breaking down nonprofit crowdfunding. I realize that these are longer training videos, but I really want to dig deep here. You know, I really want to get to the core and hopefully we can have more fundraising success stories. And I would also love it if you could leave a comment down below and let me know what you are raising money for. If you want more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.